Hey everybody, Asher here with more Kerbal Space Program picking up right where we left off on the Ultimate Carbon 3 Challenge. So Jebediah is just going to hop out again. Let's plant another flag. So Jebediah, let's plant yet another flag. Whee! He is so happy. I think this is the first time Jeb's actually landed on Mimis. So cool. There we go. Plant a, let's see here. Take a surface sample. Oh, we're on the slopes. Excellent. We actually have new datas we can get. EVA report. Keep the data. Plant the flag. So there you go. Those those slopes we have Kerbin and the moon right there here. So ultimate Kerbin three challenge. Min miss get at sign because yeah, I don't want to put a hashtag. Remember when the pound sign is not a hashtag? Ye kids these days. I have to put hashtags in all my videos because you whippersnappers don't know how to bold face things without putting a little sign in front of it. Using HTML to make a hyperlink, a href, blah, 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 blah. I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember HTML 1.0 and working with it. Whoop, board, board, there we go. And in fact, can I, I think I already have an EVA report. Let's do a crew report from the slopes. Keep that data as well. I don't have anything to transmit it, so. Because why would we put a transmitter on here? I actually put a docking port on top just in case I ran out of fuel. Obviously, that was not necessary, but there we go. EVA report. That's the one we already have, so. There we go. We've landed on the moon. We've landed on Minmus. We've way overtuned this vehicle, where we actually still have fuel here. And now we're going to fly back to Kerbin where I actually want to land as well. I don't know if splashing down will count as a landing, so we're actually going to be going in orbit and trying to pick our spot first. But let's start at least by going, let's just go ahead and fly 90 degrees, which is that way. All right, so let's go ahead and launch and turn, because you can do your gravity turn right away because there's no atmosphere. And let's just go ahead and burn up all this fuel. We're going to have to use this to escape anyway. So, oh wow, we actually didn't burn up all the fuel. We got pretty close. Yeah, we can do it. We're st we'll still be in here. Whee! This is what a ballistic trajectory looks like, kiddos. It's exactly what it looks like. We're making terrible use of the Oberth effect right now. But we're making awesome use of the... Uh, ditch stage effect. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. And because we're going so fast, these are actually flying up with us. So it's little debris we're going to have to deal with here. So Oberth effect, once again, it involves actually trying, <laughs> making a conceited effort to try and do your burn towards another object at the periapsis at the point of highest acceleration. But we have so much fuel that that doesn't really matter too much for us right now. What does matter is actually getting back onto Kerbin to complete said challenge, which I hope we still have credit for landing on Minmus, even though we staged back on there. Yeah, land on Minmus, we still have that. So landing on Kerbin with the same vessels, once again, we have our uh, fuel stages all the way over here, only 30 meters per second from this high up, and it's about two hours away. This is a 20-day flight. So this is what a ballistic trajectory looks like. Notice that we almost could have actually gone into escape trajectory, but we're never going to go back into orbit. You can either escape or go back here. That's the danger of the ballistic trajectory is that you're always going to come back down. But we're actually pretty close to making an escape burn there. So just a little bit more time acceleration. One hour away. Less than an hour away. This would be a, this would be a terrible time to fat finger it. And screw that up. So let's not screw it up. Let's go ahead and get back on the marker. And notice that we're on the surface mode when we need to be back on the orbit mode. And I guess we're going to be seeing our prograde marker here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and do that. This is just a six second burn again. There's our prograde marker. 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Do, 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 do. All right. Good enough for me. And there we go. 
180, 190, 200. Cool. All right, now the next thing we can do is we can we can we have one of two options here. We can try and actually fix our orbit, or we can just not worry about it. Because either way, as there's a jewel hanging out in the sky over here, either way, our energy, most of our energy is still being used flying around Kerbin. So let's go ahead and practice our uh, thing from before. If we want to fly back towards somewhere, we want to actually, uh-oh, that's not what I meant to do. We want to actually fly, not that side, we want to fly over here. So we're actually going to be making a, a decent burn here. So will this actually get, no, that gets us on an escape velocity. Are we burning too hard too fast? And here we go. Okay, so now suddenly my uh, my mouse scroll wheel is actually making this happen. All right, let's just go ahead and play like this. Okay, I don't like actually adjusting things like this. I do kind of like getting here, but let's see. Another thing you can do is always just kind of move this around the orbit a little bit just to see if there's a place that'll let you burn a little harder, a little faster into here. Now the other option we have is actually doing a very long burn and try and make it out of here, but I don't really like that option. So if you want to do a retrograde burn like this, see that just puts us on an exit trajectory. That's not what we want to do. All right, now we do have enough energy for something like this. My problem is that if I do one full rotation, I'm just going to miss Duna. Like that's that's 24 days away. That's way too long. So if we burn harder like this, it's going to be a pretty rough adjustment here. But four million meters. Yeah, now we're now we're just starting to run into. We fly towards here and then go away. So four million meters. 3 million meters. It looks like we're going to have to do ye old mid-course correction yet again. And we're going to have a, a pretty harsh in, or just flying here. If I was uh, actually orbiting out from closer to the surface, I think I'd have a better time with this, but hey, here we go. We have, we have the fuel to make this happen, so let's just go ahead and make this happen. We have a lot of fuel. We have a lot of fuel. All right. So all we're going to do here is fly towards this thing. And we should be flying this way. We shouldn't be flying towards the apoapsis. That would make absolutely no sense. All right, so one hour, 49, 48, 47. Like I said, we're not going for perfection. We're just going for completion. Whoop. All right, and let's fly right here. All right, and are we actually going to be able to do this, or is Jeb going to miss the Duna flight? Once again, we just have so much, we have so much delta V that we're using. This should be okay. See, we have, we could have actually slingshot with the moon to get back into a better encounter. That may have been pretty smart, but we're not super smart about this here. All right, now all we want to do is an arrow capture. So if we leave out of here, Okay, that's one day away. Where are we at right now? 4,000, 4 million. Yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be a really fast entrance. There we go. If we go from right here to one day, we're five days away from periapsis. The other thing that we can actually do is try and use this marker to bring it in just a little bit. We have the fuel to put ourselves into a pretty decent orbit. It's not going to be a perfect orbit, but yeah, there we go, like 106. Mid, the power of mid-course correction is great. All right, so let's do this. We're going to be escaping Minmus. 
Notice our marker is moving, going a little crazy here, but we're back in the uh, curve and sphere of influence, and we have close enough time to make this burn, so let's just go ahead and make it now. So periapsis is 3 million, 2 million, 1 million. Let's go ahead and take off the marker here. 5, 4, 3, 2, okay, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now there's two ways I could go about this. I could go for the arrow capture right here. But like I said, I'm not sure if this challenge requires me to actually uh, be in orbit or not. So there's, there's a few ways I can do this. I can drop this down and uh, just let the arrow capture bring me in very slowly and be kind of at the mercy of the planet, or I can use my very, very extraneous fuel so resources that I have to try and actually make a landing here. And I think because I have enough fuel, let's see what kind of delta V I need to bring, my, to bring myself back in here. This is not the efficient way to do this at all. About 100 delta V to bring ourselves in to within moon range, which is all we, which is all we really want. Yeah, that's, that'll be just fine, as long as we're not escaping. Because within moon range, it just adds a few hours. We're not talking about days here. So how long until this marker? Three days. All right, two days, one day, five hours, because days are six hours in Kerbal. Like I said, I could go for the arrow capture here. I'm just not sure if my heat shield is going to be very happy about that. And I'm not sure if a splashdown is going to count as a landing here. So 40, 30... We're pretty close. This is the kind of stuff we'll have to get used to doing as we uh, move closer to getting unknown tracked objects back to us. So let's see. 160 meters per second. Like I said, I, doing an arrow capture is far more efficient than what I'm doing here. The reason I'm doing it like this is because I've never done this mission before, so I don't know if a splashdown counts. But I do have all of these things ready and available. I do have a pretty substantial heat shield because this lander can doesn't do great. I mean, splashdown might count as a landing. Technically, technically you do land on a splashdown, but let's see, we're about to be at our periapsis, and we're gonna do a retrograde burn to end all retrograde burns, so ready to fire the missiles, I think I am. Like I said, I just wanna do a landing that puts us on a lot of land right now, and right now we have the nice atmosphere blurring effect, but this landing would put us in the drink pretty hard. We don't want that. In fact, this may not be the greatest angle ever for making this. Let's go ahead and burn. All right, apoapsis in. Apoapsis still in. There's our moon encounter. Because the moon just likes to get in the way. You'll find that going around Duna that Ike likes to get in the way as well. So there we go. Not too much more efficiency to be had there. So if we fly around just to the other apoapsis here, we're gonna do we're gonna try and do the same thing we did before. We're just gonna go for an air capture this time. We do have we do have plenty of fuel available. I just think the atmosphere will actually destroy my ship if I don't do something other than the uh, fuel pods. So let's go around and around. One more retrograde burn should do it. At least I'll have a daytime landing. So that's a positive. So we still have power to spare. All right, there's our apoapsis, and let's get this burn in. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And because of the way the atmosphere is now, I kind of need to do like a 1900 or 1800 arrow capture. I really don't know. I'm hoping that puts us around here, but I don't know if it will. All right, so I did pause and have to look it up. And indeed, landing on land is what you have to do. Landing on the water does not seem to trigger it, even though it is on the surface here. So word to the wise here. I just want to make sure that I don't go too deep in the periapsis here. Because right now, the way the planets are rotating, I'm probably still going to end up, because I'm two hours away, it's not asking too much, 
I'm probably going to end up... Well, I can't tell. I'm not very good at judging these things. Let's focus on carbon here. Two hours from now is probably what orbital period does carbon have? It should say rotation period, six hours. So two hours puts us about a third, and a third is around... Uh, Actually, for two and a half hours away, yeah, that could put us right around this area, right around there. So that's possibly good, possibly not good. If we give ourselves a second rotation to get around here, then we may be in better shape. So let's give ourselves one more orbit. I want to see if I want to see if this is correct. So especially since we only get one shot at landing this on land with the way this vessel is designed. So there we go. One orbital period. Six out. Whoop! There. Oh wow! Look at that. All right. So that's not good. That's not what we want. So we have a uh, another possibility of making it on the land the next go around. Hmm. Let me actually bring down my uh, apoapsis a little bit here. We have the we have the fuel to do it because by the time we go up and around, it's going to be pretty much a day. And that's not fantastic. So that's the prograde vector. Let's go retrograde here real quick. Still going at a really, really fast orbital clip here. All right. Yeah, that is that is a little annoying that you have to actually land on the land, but I'm not the one that made the challenge. So let's see here. We're still, this is all the fuel we have, so it really doesn't matter what happens. This is not very efficient at all, but one hour makes it a little more predictable all right be about two hours till we get here again so that should put us right over this junk all right let's do it again so if we go around and around the planet we want to bring our periapsis back down here. We want to actually land on the land. Who knew, right? This is about an hour and some change away. Like I said, we don't have to have it exact. I just want to have it at a good spot. All right, so we're at the apoapsis now. Let's go ahead and burn retrograde because that's a thing. Pretty low orbital speed for here, but we are a few million miles out. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two. That's either going to put us around here or around there. We're at what? an hour away yeah I think we're gonna be I think we're gonna be okay let's let's give it let's give it a shot so let's just go ahead and uh, let's fire this straight down because that's actually gonna change my uh, periapsis just a little bit all right and decouple there we go. That nice big ring thing there is just the thing that was surrounding the heat shield. Nothing much else to see. So let's go ahead and see if we have just screwed ourselves mightily. We have just... Oh, good. I think we're actually going to land on the land. If we can actually bring our orbit in pretty well. So we're back to physical time acceleration. We want to be pointing retrograde. And we want to get on that green stuff. Right now, there are, the stars are winking out of the sky. Minmus is still visible. There's our debris. Like I said, as long as we can just make it to this periapsis, okay, we'll be good. And I don't know for sure if that's the case. All right, so landing is good, right? 
And are we just about at land? I think we're actually going to be able to confirm landfall in just a minute. I'm going to turn off SAS. We are good on resources. I do have enough power for electric charge. This is getting direct sunlight, so that's awesome. And good, we're actually making it to a uh, part of Kerbin that I don't usually land on. So here is our heat shield doing its thing. I chose the bigger one to try and protect the parachutes here, so I hope that works out. But we're hitting the atmosphere at about a little less than 3,000 meters per second, so this should be able to hold and not really sweat it too terribly much. All right, so we're slowing down. We have some grasslands up here. We don't need to override the crew report that we have that actually has valuable science. What does it look like from Jab? Oh, fire in the ground. The ground's on fire. Our altitude's still pretty good. Our other spaceship parts are flying over there. We have some mountains up ahead. But yeah, there we go. Land is good. Rotation period is the amount of time it takes for the whole thing to rotate. And right now, we are not terribly close to the Kerbal Space Center at all. But we're not as far away as we could be. So back to action. And do 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 do. Heat shield having to do a little bit of work. Because we are coming in the atmosphere at a pretty low angle. But I think even like a 200 strength heat shield could have survived this just fine. It's just actually keeping this stuff from burning off that's hanging off the sides. That'd be nice. So here we go. Our goals is we have a little bit of a jump there. Land vessel on Kerbin. Well, apparently landing on water is not landing on land, so we shall see. There's no more fire. He can now kind of survey the ground below him. So as long as like this doesn't crash and burn or anything, we should be okay. In fact, I can probably deploy the parachutes pretty shortly. Let's actually wait till just a little bit longer, because right now our orbital speed and surface speed are pretty different, but the surface speed is what we care about now because we are in the atmosphere. We're not in the soupy atmosphere of 1.0.1 or 1.0.2, but even the uh, 1.0 atmosphere, you gotta take this into consideration. So parachutes did not burn up, and they are slowing us down just a little bit. Once again, I turned off the SAS, just so we can make this happen. All right, so 7,000. How high up are we actually? Pretty high, so that's good. Lastly, land your vessel on Kerbin. Well, we're on land. As long as this heat shield doesn't like explode, should be okay. Actually, really over budgeted the heat shield, but that's all right. We can time accelerate pretty well. 3,000, yep, there we go. 2,000, we're gonna get our parachutes to fire here in just a moment. Parachutes, activate, there we go. And we're going down just a little more. And how many feet up are we? Not too high. Do we get credit where credit is due? Do we complete the contract? Do we actually land? Boom! Land! Carbon Ultimate Carbon 3 Challenge. Complete! Jebediah, how do you feel? Feels pretty good. So contract actually completed here. Jeb with his lowly vessel. Let's plant the flag. He's happy. He needs a new haircut. He's been in space for a while. Different EVA style, but what can you do? Challenge complete. You have to land on the land. So EVA report from the highlands. Surface sample shouldn't give us any sign. Oh, a little bit of science. Okay. And back on the capsule. And here we go. Let's see. Let's go ahead and get our contract complete thing here. So, plant a flag on the moon. Get a little bit of dollars. And then here we go. You have successfully visited three celestial bodies in a single vessel. We get a ton of money. Yay! Bored. All right. One stop in the recording just to make sure that everything recorded. And it looked like it did. So let's go ahead and recover the vessel. Because I would seriously hate to have a 27-day space flight nixed by a lack of recording, although we've done that before. I actually got 440 science, which is a little bit of a surprise. And we're at over 2 million funds, and Jebediah gained 3 experience, but no levels. Total reputation is now a lot higher. I think we're in the light green zone here. 
And do we have any new missions here? We have build a surface outpost on Menmus, perform orbital surveys, satellite, rescue someone from the surface of the moon, which is pretty interesting here. But the most important missions that we have coming up here are the Ike missions, are the Duna missions. So you notice that that's what I'm really focusing towards in the day to come. So next episode, we're going to be working on building a uh, surface outpost on Ike by practicing doing it on the moon. And let's double check and make sure we're still okay for our transfer here. Year one, day 186, I believe we have approximately 40 days to go before we get to the proper angle here. And right now from the looks of it, yeah, the angle still needs to be around here, around 30 degrees, 30, 35 degrees. And we're not there yet. So we still got some time to run some practice missions. Cool, look, Escape from Kerbin is another contract I did off there. Still going around the sun very soon. But hey, that's it for now. This is Asher. It was a lot of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Pretty sure I had to split this up in multiple episodes, so sorry for the inconvenience for some of you who maybe want to know what was going on, but I hope you enjoyed it. This Kerbal Space Program, we keep on chugging, and soon we're going interplanetary. If you liked it, feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe, and just as you see, thank you.